What is up, everybody? It is Og here, back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the second boss in BWL, Vale. So this is the second part of my BWL boss guides, and basically what it is is that we are a casual guild on the raid leader on my Holy Priest. So if you guys want to see this action live, definitely check check out the Twitch link down below. But what I wanted to come out with is basically some guides for more casual people or people who just don't know the fights entirely or to give potential full boss strats to guilds who are in need of it. So we are just a casual raiding guild. We aren't min-maxing or we're not using crazy potions or anything like that. And so I find that, you know, there's some guilds out there that are doing it in 30 minutes, but there's probably a lot that just are still struggling with it and trying to figure it out. So this is more tailored towards them to try to give some tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. And maybe those could help some of the higher guilds as well. But this is mainly for them to give some tips and tricks so that they can go ahead and take out the bosses cleanly. In the background right now, we have the Veil fight. And you guys can watch. What I'm going to be doing is showing some wipes. And I'm going to be showing our successful attempts. And so I'm going to be talking through the exact boss strat that we use. The important parts of the boss. And then showing you some wipes and where we messed up. So let's jump into it. So before we get started with the actual kill, what I want to do is go over some of the boss mechanics and strategies and things like that so you guys are ready to go. So this boss is very unique in that it does not have 100% health. In fact, it only has, I believe, 35% health. And your goal is just to burn down the boss as quickly as possible. Reason being, there's pulsing AoE going out, as you can see right now. That pulsing AoE is not only doing about you know 500 damage a hit or something like that to everyone in the raid but it is also going ahead and applying interrupts to everyone in the raid and so a huge recommendation for all of your healers is to spec into their interrupt talents where they won't be interrupted as much now that pulsing damage is coming out and there's also flame breast going out on the main tank those flame breasts are doing a ton of damage and so the main tank is taking a ton of damage inevitably your main tank is going to die throughout the fight it's just going to happen uh it's going to be either from a gib like that or your tank is going to get burning adrenaline which is basically a debuff that turns you into a living bomb and he's going to die from that so you need to be spamming on those main tanks what we do is we have myself focus solely on the main tanks and just spam heal them with greater healing as much as possible or flash heal depending on the situation how low of health they are we also have our druids ready to go, watching out for NS, shamans watching out for NS, things like that to make sure that we keep up the tanks. The next mechanic is going to be a living bomb. And so similar to Baron, this living bomb is going to cause you to explode, but this one is actually going to cause you to explode. Not only does it cause you to explode, but it also reduces your health every tick. So eventually you're going to die from this mechanic. There's no way to live through it. And so what you need to do is you need to position yourself properly. And so what we do is that we go ahead and move immediately over to this left pillar to make sure that we are not going to explode on the group. So as soon as you get living bomb, as you can see, a person just ran off to the left. They go hide behind that pillar. But you also want to make sure that you're still doing actions because here's that left pillar over there. They go run right behind there and explode. That way they're out of line of sight and aren't close enough to the group to explode on the group. But you also have instantaneous actions. So if you're a healer, you can instantly heal everything. If you are a caster, you can instantly cast every single DPS ability. So you want to be spamming those as much as possible before you die to try to get out as much DPS as possible. The next big boss mechanic is the fact that you have unlimited resources. So this entire fight, you can't run out of mana. You can't run out of energy. You can't run out of rage. You're just spamming as much DPS as humanly possible the entire fight, which is beautiful, but also difficult to manage. So... As far as DPS goes, it's great because you can pump out a ton of DPS. But you also have to watch your threat because if one of your tanks dies, what's going to end up happening is that the boss is just going to turn your rain group and just fire breath all over your rain group and just completely wipe you guys. So what you want to make sure is that the tank always stays higher on threat than the DPS. So there's some quick and easy ways to make sure that this always happens. Tanks on this fight should all be potentially warriors, I would recommend, but they can also use daggers. So by using daggers, they have a higher attack speed, which means that they can get off heroic strike more, which means that they can generate more threat. So I highly, highly recommend that your tanks use daggers on this fight and are spamming heroic strike. What you want is for all of your DPS to be below 
all of your tanks. So all typically three tanks for the entirety of the fight, making sure that if one of the tanks goes down, then you're ready to go pick it up with the off tank, swap them in and not lose the DPS. If you're using a dagger, you pretty much can go all out. I would give them about a two seconds head start, but then outside of that, you can pretty much go all out and you're good to go for the fight. So the last mechanic to watch out for is basically raid positioning. So the boss has a tail swipe and also a flame breath, meaning that you have a very small window where you can stand in without getting hit by those. So what we found is that if we stand in a clump on the fifth pillar from the right, we're able to, right in the middle of the fifth pillar from the right, we're able to avoid both the flame breath and avoid the tail swipe. So as you can see here, we're going to be standing right in the middle of the fifth pillar, so one, two, three, four, five, and standing right there. I recommend marking a healer with a star or something like that, and everyone can stack on them and then just stand there. The last little bit that I want to mention before we get started with the boss kill is the raid composition and how you want your raid to be set up. So melee is king on this fight because obviously casters are getting knocked back constantly. Throw as many shields as you can on the casters, but inevitably they're going to be getting knocked back. So if you can stack a bunch of melee, that is your best bet to be able to take out the boss with any problems. That being said, a lot of casual guilds probably won't be able to do that. And so your fight is gonna last a little bit longer. And so what you need to do is that you need to make sure that you're keeping people up. So what we do is that we try to put a priest in every single group. Now, as you can see, there are two priests in one group. That's our shadow priest, so special circumstance. But we try to sp spread out the priests as much as possible because priests have amazing AoE healing abilities when they don't need to worry about mana. Those two abilities are Holy Nova and Prayer of Healing. And so Prayer of Healing can just be spammed on the entire group and do a ton of healing if they don't have the interrupt spell. And you should never need to worry about your party dying. Some priests do as much as 1,500 HPS, just spamming prayer of healing. If you do have the interrupt, if you do not have the interrupt talent, what you can also do is just spam Holy Nova. So Holy Nova still does a ton of healing to your party and you should be good to go. I would also recommend throwing out renews and all hots as possible after every cast that you're doing. And so personally, what you're going to see me on the doing on the kill is trying to heal the main tank while also throwing out a renew on off people in my party just to make sure that they can live throughout the fight. So let's jump into the actual kill. So we're positioned in our spot, ready to go. And now we're just going over some mechanics, making sure that we are good to go for the actual boss fight. We're gonna start off tanking actually with our off tank because the off tank is gonna be taking for the longest and we wanna make sure that our main tank per se, the person who should generate plenty of threat is gonna be number two on the meter so that he is high enough on threat to be ready to go as soon as the boss kills the first main tank. I mean, there's no way to avoid it. It's the, the main tank's gonna die. And so you want your second tank to be very good at generating threat because if he's not, the boss could very quickly just turn and breath on the entire raid. So as you can see here, we have a little pool timer going and we're getting ready. Priest at this point should be buffing everyone with renew and shields as many people as they possibly can but definitely themselves and the main tank making sure that they keep up the main tank here as you can see the main tank is going to be taking a ton of damage what i'm doing is i'm going back and forth from the main tank and everybody else just trying to spam heals on him while also tossing renews on my group we have a shaman healer in our group but he's also watching out for other groups and so it's imperative that i also try to get as many heals as i can you're also going to notice that what I try to do is I try to keep up shields on the main tank as much as I can, but also on myself. Reason being, I want to make sure that when the tank is low, I can actually get off my heal and not have to worry about an interrupt. But as you can see, there's a good amount of raid damage going out, but we are also burning down the boss pretty quickly. Our DPS is okay, I would say, for this fight, but if you have a ton of warriors and if you have a good amount of rogues, you're going to be blowing through Veil vale very, very quickly because Veil vale will quickly get into execute range and then you're gonna be good to go. As you can see here, the Shaman in my group goes down. And so it is now basically on me just to make sure that I keep them up. What we actually do is that we call for the tank to die because the tank has been taking for so long and everything like that, or maybe if they get a bomb or something like that, we pretty much call for them to die and we immediately swap over to just healing the off tank. That way, if the off tank pulls threat, he doesn't just immediately get one shot. So we let the first tank die on purpose pretty much 
when and make it basically be on our terms rather than on their terms. So if that's something that you're having trouble with swapping through tanks, I recommend doing that. Just call out a stop heals on main tank and swap over to the off tank. But as you can see here, we get down the fight. It is a very, very quick boss fight. There's not a ton of crazy things going on or anything like that. There's not a ton of mechanics, but it is a pure and all out DPS race. And so I recommend if you are having trouble with this boss fight, get some pre-raid buffs and things like that to make sure that when you're good to go or the way you're ready to go, you're good to go and you could just blow through the boss as quickly as possible. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm gonna go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.